Hi everyone, it's Agnes again and I've got an interview for you today and it's about meaningful work since I know many of you do not like what you do and you don't like your jobs and you're looking to do other things. Uh, I want to introduce you today to Luke Morrison. Hello Luke. Hi. Uh, Luke. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> yeah, Luke, Luke and I met well, I actually met him a few times, but yes, the other day on Sunday was the day that we actually had a conversation. Luke actually has a wonderful little business where he makes, I'm not going to tell you, I'll let him tell you, but Luke and I had a conversation about it and he loves what he does and it's meaningful work for him. And first, firstly, Luke, tell people what your where you are and also what your nationality and background is family wise and then we'll talk about business okay so uh nationality is my dad is a british born jamaican and my mum is british um so that's nationality so i was born in england grew up in london and yep. then i don't live there anymore but i live nearby um so and now what I'm doing is a kind of just making food for a market stall and just yeah I'm really doing it because uh, I dropped out of uni so yeah. I just wanted to chase my dreams and do what I wanted to do and not really follow the rules of such. <laughs> yeah and when because you and i had a conversation the other day and i yeah. said to you because i you smashed my preconceived ideas about i because all the people i know that are in their 20s they eat mcdonald's they eat subway they eat junk food and they're not interested in yeah. cooking. so you actually really smashed for me a preconceived idea which was so interesting and when i came to your stand I thought you were helping your mum, but it's your mum who's <laughs> helping you. Yeah. I so. can't drive is the issue yet. <laughs> that should be sorted this year though. <laughs> well, it's not the easiest thing to get your license in the UK, I hear. So, yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's go back to 12 years old because that's when yeah. you said you started cooking. So what, what started it off? My mum was actually cooking a Thai curry, a red Thai curry and... I just went downstairs and insisted I cooked it. I was just like, you know what, I want to cook this. Just try it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so she was like, yeah, okay, cook it. And then we ha it was a dish we had quite often. And it was, uh, she was like, that's the best it's, you've ever, that I've ever had it. And so from there, we kind of went, went on and I would make uh, food a bit more often, more yeah. and more harder things. And just kind of went from there, really. Wow. Until I I kind of around 14 probably stopped for a while and then again at 16 I went to college to do it so it kind of Oh you went out. to college to do what? Uh cooking. Oh, I you went I got a cooking? chef degree. Yeah. Wow. Nice. And you didn't what made you choose to create your own products rather than going and working in a restaurant or a kitchen or something? So I have previously worked in restaurants and I just felt like you were benefiting someone else more than you were benefiting yourself from it. Mm -hmm. My time is <laughs> worth more than probably about seven, eight pounds an hour what I was getting for it. So, yeah. Yeah. And it was really long hours. I, I just yep. kind of lost my love for cooking from doing it yep. because it wasn't just purely making things that you love it was making the same thing over and over yeah i like what you said about my time is worth more than that and it, that, it is <laughs> that's good um that's good self-worth and good self-esteem to say you know what i actually know i've got more to offer so yeah. so how old were you when you left the restaurants so i started my business two almost two years ago so i properly got into it one year ago two years ago i was kind of testing recipes and all yep. that sort of thing yeah kind of getting to a place where i had a product to sell yep <laughs> but yeah so uh right up until then i was cooking in kitchens 
kitchen portering as well. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So you just literally stepped away from it and then started this because you're still living with your mum, with your mum. Yeah. So you're doing, like you said to me, I actually do this during the week. I, I prepare stuff, I package yeah. it. And so can you tell the people about what, this, what you do sell? Cause I, I actually bought your chili relish. I bought your, um, your sauce. Yeah. And I've bought your oil before and I bought your spices and your spices. I made the chicken the other yes, yesterday, the day before I did what you said. I put it with the oil and I put yeah. the spices in and I cooked it and I added it in lots of veggies and it was so good. Oh, thank you. I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Though. <laughs> and, it was, and it was Luke, it was a simple recipe. Like it wasn't really yeah. complicated. I think that was what I really liked was you had already put the spices together. Yeah. And they were literally, you just chuck them in. I marinated it for about three hours and it was, and my, you know, my partner said, oh, yum, this is, this is good. And I've still got leftovers today that I'm going to have because it actually tastes even better the next day. <laughs> so uh, the whole premise of it really is to teach people that they can cook. So I, I started off doing olive oils, infused olive oils. So lemon, garlic, chili, lemon, yep. uh, and then spice blends and curry powders to go with them and then I also do recipe cards so, so like mm. and it's really simple such as put the <laughs> spice blend on, mm. on whatever you want to eat and shove it in the oven literally that simple because I yeah. want people to know that it's really easy to cook if you have some uh, some stuff already there and then you can build up your confidence from there and do some harder things and yeah yeah, I, I yeah. just believe anyone can cook and I really want to push that yep. out there. <laughs> but you know what? I remember when I, years ago when I was, I mean, I'm like you, I love cooking too. Yeah. But I remember, because my culture being French-Italian, a lot of French recipes are so complicated that I yeah. would go, oh, just, you know, I'd get my dad to teach me something or my mom and then I'd go, you know what, I don't think I'll make that again because the list of ingredients was like page long. Yeah. And I remember reading that book for ingredients and it was literally two women that had children that were busy and every recipe they wrote was for ingredients only. Yeah. And what I cooked from your, what I'd got from you the other day, it was the chicken, the spices, the olive oil, and then I chucked in the veggies. So yeah. you actually created a four ingredients recipe, which I think for people that don't cook or people that are busy, it's such a great, simple and fun thing to cook because it didn't take long. No, yeah, that, that's the whole <laughs> idea behind it. You can have, because it's healthy, fast and yeah. so it's not just for people who can't cook it. It's, it's yeah. for everyone really. Yeah. It's also for people who don't believe they can cook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So can you, can you share a bit about like why you created certain products and, and what yeah. made you Choose those products. Uh, so I have a lot of Jamaican products and Caribbean products because obviously that's kind of my heritage and is the sort of food I was eating growing up. Um, and I, I pick a lot of different foods that are quite commonly popular, but do my own twist on them. With the like chili sauces, I kind of do a tomato-based one with no sugar because people don't want the sugar in it and they, some people that do want the sugar don't actually notice the difference because it's not a necessary ingredient and so like you can make it healthier and no no preservatives that you just can't find in the shop. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How many products have you got in total? Probably about 15-ish. I'm not okay. too certain on that though. <laughs> okay. Did, like when I saw you the other day at the market, did you have all the 15 products there? Uh, yeah, that was all my products, yeah. Yeah. And so your mum helps you to obviously get you there and then get you home and then you you got someone there with you for the day. Um, yeah. Do you want to – do you have like a, a – apart from that market, where else do you go? Uh, so I do – markets along the south coast so Worthing and Brighton usually 
Okay. Uh, but I prefer to do the London ones. I'm going to start doing more different London ones soon, but I'm at the moment still only at Alexandra Palace. So Yeah, where I met you. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's a long day, isn't it? You leave really early and you get home really late. Uh, we leave at about seven and then get home at, uh, I'm not sure what time we get home, it changes, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's packing the car and everything before that that makes you have to get up earlier. Yeah. Oh, so you pack in the morning, you don't do it the night before because oh, yeah, it's food, yeah. you can't, yeah. Yeah, it's food, so. Yeah, yeah. And where do you store it all? Have you got like, where do you actually work because you're living with your parents? Where do you store everything? So... We have like a under the stair set cupboard section, which yep. is where everything for my business goes. So yep. the paperwork, we've got a cupboard for all the food, everything yep. like that. And then Excellent. just the kitchen is yep. my domain, really. <laughs> <laughs> and have you got brothers and sisters? Uh, I have one sister and she's at university, so she's okay. not here. She's not there, right? So you got the full run of the kitchen and everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. So, do you do you cook at home for your mum? Surprisingly, not as often as I should do, but I do occasionally, and she always appreciates it when I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, mums and kitchens sometimes. I yeah. don't know about your mum, but my mum, when I go to my mum's, I don't get it. I don't even get anywhere near the kitchen. <laughs> she, my mum's a huge cook too and is always cooking and giving food away to people. So yeah. I know my mum's like that with her sister, actually. If her <laughs> sister's in the kitchen, my mum will not go near it. <laughs> that's just the there's, a, there's a pecking order for yeah, when the food goes in there. <laughs> So in terms of like how many, I mean, you've got a website so people can order. Yeah. How, how, how much percentage of your sales would be online compared to face-to-face? -face? I would say probably more of them are face-to-face. -face. Okay. Uh, just because of the way my business model is. Um, yeah. It's a bit more expensive online. So people that can see me in person will yeah. see me in person normally. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Of and course. it's more people, but uh, a bit further afield that yeah. normally order online. What we'll do um, when I upload this, Luke, is I'll put a list of all the markets that you're at. So if anybody yeah. wants to go and meet you personally, they can, because a lot of people that watch the channel, as I said to you, are from London and, you know, surrounding areas. So, oh, yeah. yeah, then people can come and meet you. So, I have a dates list on my website that actually says exactly when I'm going to be at what markets, so you don't have to do any guessing work. Excellent. Oh, that's good. That's good. And we'll put the link for that down below. So where? So this is where you're up to now. What are you kind of yeah. working on in 2019? So at the moment, it's all about getting new products in. I'm kind of moving away from the chili theme because they've got a lot of products with chili in them at the moment. Yeah. And I don't want to be branded as a chili specialist solely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so currently I'm actually working on a tomato ketchup. So a yep. healthier yep. version, hopefully tastier version. Yeah. <laughs> I know it is hard to beat a good Heinz ketchup. So I'm yep. going to make sure it's, it's got to be good. If, if I'm doing a ketchup, it has to be perfect. Yeah. That's one that's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it so sounds like at such a moment, simple it's ketchup. thing, but it's not, is it? It's not simple with ketchup because people are used to it a very specific way. It's something that people like in a specific way and yep. you have to get it right. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And are you, um, like your, well, pretty much all that you do is savory rather than sweet, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. so my chili relish is sweet. Which because it's uh yeah I have to call it a relish but it's a chili jam yeah essentially um that's probably the only sweet thing I do but it's yeah. more of a savory sweet yeah no it was good I had it with the chicken that I cooked yeah <laughs> and it was really good I thought mm, you could put this with a burger or you could and I thought oh, really, it's good really good I enjoyed it 
I yeah. Enjoy. And I've still got three quarters of a jar, so <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> so in terms of looking at all of this from a meaningful work perspective, yeah. Like so many, because we talked about so many people really don't like what they do. What do you think? Like, have you got any sort of thoughts about what propelled you to actually just take the risk and get started? Because a lot of people uh, don't take the risk, Luke, you know, they just don't. To me, I've always been a bit of a risk taker because I figure while, especially while I'm young, like, what have I got to lose? I, mm. I don't have any dependencies at the moment, so I might as well throw myself out there at the moment. Mm. But I've always been a bit of a risk taker anyway. It's kind of a personality thing, I think. Yep. Uh, I, I've never been one to just accept something that I don't like. I would yeah. just be like, well, why am I doing that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I always question why I'm doing something or... It, it made me a bit of a bad student in school. They didn't really like me because I would question why we were doing things. But yes. I would always be like, I'm not sure why I'm doing this. So am yeah. I going to do it? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Like if it doesn't make sense, then why bother? Yeah. yeah. Are you, so, are you quite a creative uh, person? I wouldn't say so particularly. Um, when it comes to food, actually, yes. But, in other areas, not really, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you just got a passion for, well, being, uh, what's the word? Can't think of the word, where you just love experimenting and putting things together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, I, I see, my mum's been like that my whole life, so I always grew up with home-cooked, amazing food, and, and my mum would go to, you know, some place to get the eggs fresh from the farm and she'd go to some other farm to go and get the milk with the cream on top. And, oh, yeah. you know, I lived in Vancouver Island and then we lived um, in Australia in an alternative community. So my mum was always sourcing products from weird and wonderful. She goes to some guy to get the honey and, you know, then some other guy's got the, the, the lemon tree and the lime tree. So everything comes from fresh produce places. But I think that rather than eating processed food yeah it's made a huge difference to my life even though i was a big mcdonald's eater when i was you know probably 16 to 20 something i was just eating crap yeah i think it's that sort of mentality that kind of carried over for me though really uh, willingness to try new things with food kind of leads yeah. over to other areas so yeah i think it's kind of being brought up to try new things in a food aspect made me less afraid to try new things in other aspects of life yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And how about your friends? Are you surrounded by people that just go to McDonald's and stuff? Um, mix and match. Mix and some match. people do, some people don't. Uh, it, I would say more do than don't. Like one or two of my friends are uh, health conscious. Uh, yeah. But I do have um, some chef friends as well that are more health conscious yeah. than my other friends. So. Yeah, yeah. And but that's uh, do just they... because. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. That's just because they they know what's going into things and know yeah. what they're doing with food more so, more so than anything else. Yeah, and usually people that look after their food look after their bodies with exercise and going to the gym or training of some sort and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. And all of that sort of stuff brings endorphins anyway, which keeps you happier as a person. It and that's does. what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, I find like weeding out more and more things I don't want to do. I mean, there's nothing in my life I don't like now, but it took a while to weed out all the, whether it was people that were negative or whether it was, um, you know, you feel like you have to do something, obligations yeah. or, um, you know, you go to a job you don't like or whatever. Over the years, I thought, right, I'm weeding out everything I don't like to do. And now my life is 100%, you know, like when I met you, it's like every Sunday I don't work until, say, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I yeah. block off that whole, whole morning so I can go to the market where I met you. 
and that it's an enjoyable experience. And I like going on my own so I don't have to talk to anybody so I can really yeah. look and really, you know, really enjoy absorbing everything that's at the market. That's my whole yeah. two or three hours I spend there. And, and then you've got all this amazing food for the week that's either organic or people have really put their love and heart and soul into providing yeah. it in that form for you. Um, so yeah, it's such a wonderful thing when you surround your whole life with only fun things. And I think that's what ages people is they do a whole bunch of stuff that just makes them old in terms of they don't like doing things and they force themselves to do it. Yeah. And, and the it's, job is a big area. The job is a big area. Well, that's what you're doing every, almost every day. If, you're, if you've got a nine to five, that's five out of seven days a week. That's yeah. most of your life essentially. So if you're spending most of your life doing something, especially if it's something that you passionately dislike mm. or hate, that's yeah. not healthy for you. It, it's, it, not. it's just not healthy because then you're going every day like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be yeah. here. And it all builds up, stresses yeah. you out. And Yeah. And I think it creates depression. Yeah, certainly. people get depressed and they get anxiety and they get um, illnesses and sicknesses because it's like you are like you are literally pushing yourself to go and do. And I know sometimes you you're working a job and you like it and then it changes and you don't like it. Yeah, but you go okay. Well, now I've got to look for something else. I've got to create something, or I've got to you know really get to the point where I am. I'm merging what I love to do with money, with work, and they go together. They don't need to be, I work a job I don't like, and then I make, my, I do my hobbies on the side. It doesn't have to be separate. Yeah, they can, yeah, they can be completely intertwined. Uh, yeah. There's, there's so many jobs out there that you just probably don't even know exist mm. that, you, that people would love. And yeah. there's not even people really applying for them because, People see these office jobs as the only sense of security there is to have and the only goal to have for yeah. work, essentially. And I think that that's uh, yeah. crazy, really. I agree. I agree. You can go out and find something you love doing, any, uh, a job you love doing, really anything, because yeah. there's so many different jobs out there, especially nowadays where there's technology and you can do it as a source of entertainment. Yeah, playing games for a living nowadays. Like I know, it's, it's a completely different world than even ten years ago when I was growing up. Like yeah, it's yeah. completely different. Well, you know how you and I were talking about me doing YouTube. YouTube's only ten years old this year. It's not two thousand and nine, and it's like yeah. I'm free because of YouTube and Google because Google owns YouTube. It's yeah. like thank you. I am free because of them. And there every morning, like when I do my gratitude, I go, okay, they're at the top of my list because I, yeah. you know, I live in Sydney and London and I go to France to see my family and I just take my work with me. And I, it's like, I, I can mix. There is no, you're going on holidays. There's just, you yeah. go places and you work parts of the day and you have parts of the day off. Yeah. And it's so like waking up knowing that's how your day's going to be. Like I feel excited every morning. I just go, woohoo, you know. I love it. I love it. I yeah. love it. And it's like that, I mean, for you too, because you wake up in the morning and go, okay, what am I going to do for my business today? So. Yeah. What do I need to make? <laughs> yeah. Essentially most days. And yeah. Do I you cook I, every day? Not every day, no. So okay. I, I would just make what I need to make during the week. It really varies depending on time of year. So, okay, Christmas I'm obviously at my busiest. January yeah. probably least busy in some part of August as well. It kind of dies down in August for a little bit. Okay, it's a little low. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. But and yeah, so, so you keep it, the stock up to a certain. You know, okay, I need to have you know, if a 30 of that one yeah. and 50, you, so you know what levels you need because of what you've sold yeah. at the markets. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's just based off of what I usually sell. And then do I have that amount <laughs> or a bit over that amount? Yeah. Yeah. What do you find is your top sort of top three products? Uh, so my Sri Lankan curry powder 
definitely has got to be up there. Okay. And then probably my normal chili sauce and then my scotch bonnet chili jam or relish. Okay. That's wow. That's probably the three here. <laughs> so do you find you get a lot of repeat business from people that... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A yeah. lot of my business is repeat business. You see yeah. s similar faces a lot of the time. Yeah. Oh, that's... Once people, it's the sort of thing, once people try it, they're less afraid to come back because trying something for the first time is always the hardest. Yeah, yeah for sure. Why do you think the Sri Lankan um, spice is the most popular? Uh, so... My other two options of curry powders would be the Jamaican or the South Indian. They're yeah. both ones that are more common in shops. Okay. Here where in England, it's really hard to find Sri Lankan. Not sure oh. about where else, but you can't. It's hard to find it. It's, okay. Yeah. Ah, wow. That's probably all, the only reason, really. And it's really good, but yeah. it is really hard to find. I might have to try that next time I come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be I've like <laughs> a few different recipes for that one as well. Yeah. I love how you've got the recipes just on a small sheet, front and back, with a little picture so you can just go, here's the ingredients. Because sometimes you look at recipes and you go, oh, my God, that's so long. Whereas yours are just a few ingredients, one little paragraph, that's it. Yeah, do this, then do that, and then eat it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then eat it. Yeah, no, it's good. Have you got any samples? Yeah. So, oh, so I've got... Yeah, let's see what, what you got. With me, I've got a, this is a Jamaican curry powder. And yeah. It's in a tin, so yeah. just open that. So I always struggle with these tins. So it's just like that. There you go. Yeah. Lovely. Smells really good. <laughs> yeah. When you open one of those inside, it's, the <laughs> smell comes out. Uh, tomato kasundi, which is a um, tomato and a slightly spicy relish sort of thing. Yeah. It's, uh, Indian style. So uh, what would you use that for? So it could go with curries as an accompaniment. Yeah. Uh, would be a usual one, kind of like a uh, mango chutney. Or you yep. have it with a sandwich, a cheese toasty. I've heard is one of the best things to do it with. Yeah. Um, I was selling it as a trio with a for a cheese board uh, yeah. so I was doing it with a chili jam and a cranberry and roast shallot relish yeah uh, as a trio and that was a cheese board trio which absolutely yeah. just flew off the shelf yeah yeah but yeah. yeah it's just chuck it with something yeah add it on to something bit of extra flavor that one yeah um Got my two chili sauces, my Scotch bonnet one, and just the regular one. They're both yep. tomato based, so they're not too hot. Yep. But obviously, some people like different heats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got from no heat up to. Uh, with the jams, I have no heat up to hot. Um, the chili sauce is a little bit hot. It's not that hot, the normal one, but yeah. There's definitely some kick to it. Yeah, lovely. Have you got any more products there? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the chili sauce. <laughs> yeah. Um, just. That's the one I got the other day. Oh, yeah, is it? Yeah. Or was it the Scotch bonnet one? No, I got that one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then, so this would be what our spice blends look like. They're just in a little oh, recyclable perfect. plastic tub. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, that's the purpose one. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of. My own little, they're all my own uh, recipes or recipes that I've taken and edited to what I think is uh, essentially better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because you can never get something right from what someone else does because obviously with recipes, you have to change them every time, even no matter who gives it to you because your cooking equipment will be different. The ingredients you buy will be different. It will always taste different no matter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it does. It does. Uh, and then the last one I've got with me is the cranberry and roast shallot relish, which okay. is there. 
it, all the ingredients on all of them are on the back and all the labeling like that. Yeah. Uh, most and where of my, you, sorry? Can I ask you, where do you, do you have to go to different places to source the quantities of ingredients you need? Uh, so I often use, uh, I often get them online, so yeah. wholesale online, and then uh, pick up the chilies from myself yeah because i like to get them pick out the individual chilies and yeah yeah <laughs> make yeah. sure they're really good yeah you know there's in australia there's a food channel like there's a whole food channel on, uh, when when you're in australia so it just goes from cooking show to cooking show to cooking show so every time i go to my mom she's got this thing this channel on and 90 percent of the best chefs Ainsley, Nigella, Jamie Oliver. It's like the top chefs and the top cooks end up on this food channel. So yeah. I might go to my mum's and see you on there soon. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the next one. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had any um, TV shows yet. Like yet. That, so. yet. <laughs> you, never you never know. You never Not know. quite an international star, but not yet. Not yet. <laughs> the pond, the pond gets bigger. The pond yeah. Gets bigger. Yeah. So have you showed me everything? Uh, that's all that I have with me at the moment. Yeah. Lovely. Um, rest of the stuff I need to do some making again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the oils. The oils. I've bought your oil before too. Yeah. I was... bought the garlic one. I think. Yes, it was the garlic one. Yeah. That one's like the salad dressing king. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's wonderful. Look, I'm I'm so excited when people are creating things they love and whether it's a product or service, I just think anybody that is doing what they love and they're creating yeah. it for themselves and they're, you know, just step by step, month by month, just working on it, improving it, putting their love and heart and soul into it. I just think it's so, so wonderful. I was, I was so surprised when we had that conversation because we were just talking in general and then we had yeah. quite, you know, we talked for about 20 minutes and yeah, yeah. it was just such a great conversation and you were so, you know, you were so into it and I wasn't even thinking about work that day. I was thinking about food. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's Sometimes like, it just happens, doesn't it? Just it? Happens. You start speaking yeah. to someone and you're like, Wait a second. Yeah, and that's how it was that day. And, um, yeah, it was just so nice to see. I just love when you talk, start talking to someone and you can feel the passion for what they're yeah. doing. Um, and that's what I felt with you that day. And, and your mum, you know, was, you can tell your mum's really just very supportive and very loving. No, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to have done this at, at this stage in my life without yeah. my help. Because, without her, yeah. Yeah. Because obviously, otherwise, I'd have had to have built up a lot more um, money in case I didn't succeed. You'd have to have a bit more of a fallback. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you're a product, you've got to in. You've got to have mo your money's tied up in your product. So yeah, yeah. Until it, it it sells. It's investing in yourself, though, really, isn't it? It is. It really is. Well, but talking of people yeah. with passion, I actually met a someone who wrote a book the other day yeah. and he was just talking to someone on the, in, it was at the market. I was just walking past and I had to stop and buy his book just because I heard how he was talking about his book that he'd written. I wow. Like, I have to buy this from you just because of how into it you are. Wow. <laughs> it does. It's a magnet, isn't it? Yeah. It, it made me passionate about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you just think, I wasn't even thinking of buying a book today. No. At all. Yeah. No, it is wonderful. So have you got any words of advice for people that are, you know, scared to take a risk or have got an idea and they've never followed it through? Have you got any insights? Yeah. Uh, so obviously it all depends on your personal situation. Sometimes you'll have to build up something yourself before you take that risk. Yeah. But you can, also, you can take that risk part-time. You yes. don't have to jump into it straight into the deep end. Yeah. You, you can take that risk one day a week or two days a week. Yeah. And then 
slowly ease yourself into it so that it is less of a risk if you don't want to just jump straight into something. Mm. You, it's not the only way of doing it. You can. I agree. I agree. You know, Luke, when I was starting my YouTubing, I had this thing that I do. Someone told me about it and I thought that's such a great idea. It was called post it yeah. Monday and it was, you'd get a little yellow post it note and you'd write down three things that you were going to do that week for your, your passion or your idea. Oh yeah. And I was working, you know, still working in the Westfield shopping centers, umbers up bladders, doing all that stuff that I told you about the other day. And I started this post at Monday and I did that for two years. Every week I would yeah. have three things to do, whether it was a bit of research, whether it was calling someone and asking for some advice or saying, can you share your experience with me? Whether it was going to, um, you know, a shop to actually look at certain things to help me with ideas. I don't know. There was always a list of things to do. And some things took me 15 minutes. Other things took me a couple of hours, but every week I would do those three things. Yeah. And it, it, like you're saying, you started off part-time on the side and then you slowly, 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 slowly get to the point where the thing just takes over and then you can let go of the other main yeah. thing you're doing. And that way it's, no, everybody's got an hour a week. Everybody's got two hours a week. Yeah. And I think it's important to set yourself really small goals that are realistic yeah. Not 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 set yourself the end goal straight away. Yes. Set yourself a goal for now. Yeah. Something that will help you get towards your end goal, but it, uh, you don't want your end goal to be the thing you're looking forward to. You need smaller things to look forward to, to yeah. otherwise you'll lose all motivation really. Definitely. I agree with that. I think it's the turtle wins the race, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I find I agree with you. I think um you still like you say you still hold the end goal. But, yeah. and the thing is, like, I find if you stop looking at what can I get out of something and you say to yourself, what can I give to this? Yeah. I think if you're coming from the giving to it, it, it flourishes. If you're constantly looking, how can I get, how can I get money? How can I get customers? How can I, but you literally, it's like when I met you and your mom the other day and we had a proper chat because I've bought stuff from you before, but we never had a chat. Yeah. You gave me information. You gave me recipes. You gave me ideas. You gave me the passion that you have for this. And I walked away going, ah, I've just received something. Yeah. I received your knowledge. I received your bits and pieces. Yes, I've got your products, but it was so much more. The experience was so much more than just the products. So it's like if you, I think no matter what business you do, if you come at it from what can I give, how can I be of service through my product? How can I give? You're giving healthy food. You're giving recipe ideas for people that are busy, people that don't know how to cook, people that aren't really yeah. interested in cooking. You're helping by giving a simple, very basic thing we all need to eat. Let's make it good. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's just uh, kind of... When, when you're giving stuff to people, they kind of, uh, they can relate to you more on a personal level, especially if you're giving knowledge or something like that. It's, yeah. It's the power of doing something face to face is so much different than yep. buying something from Sainsbury's or a big corporate. It, it's completely different when you have that personal Definitely. connection. Yeah. And you know what? That's why I go to the market. Yeah. Because you're not just putting your own groceries through the checkout. I mean, there are times where you don't want to talk to anybody and that's fine. Yeah. But when you're, when you're getting into cooking, it's the sharing of ideas, the sharing of recipes, the sharing of how you actually do it that somebody goes, Oh, I never thought of doing that that way. Or I've never thought to, you know, the order in which you do things, the, the temperatures, the speed, the, how about you throw in this little ingredient, you know? Yeah. It's those sorts of things that you go, wow. Well, I've actually been given recipes from customers before and I've just been like, whoa, that's a bit of a change in how this wow. is supposed to go. But you, the people come to you and be like, yeah, I, I've just done this with it. And you'll be like, yeah. really? I didn't know, I didn't even know that you could do that. Yeah. And then you'll try it and then put that out there for other people to try. It's, yeah. It's, 
it's just yeah you really get to I get to learn about my own products as well it's crazy yeah oh so they give you recipes of how they used your products yeah so people ah. will come back and tell me like oh I used it like this or <laughs> yeah it's it's hilarious <laughs> beautiful that's nice that's nice well excellent this has been really just, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. It's just lovely. I, I think it's wonderful. And you, you know what? I learned this lesson way later than you. I should have done that stuff. I mean, I had a dance show where I was dancing and, you know, doing touring schools and all that stuff in my twenties. Yeah. But, um, you know, I tore my hamstring and fell off the wagon with my injuries at that time. So I had to come up with something else, but I think, you know, you've actually got and understood how important this is really young. And I, I don't think everybody gets that at your age, how important this is. Yeah. And then they have a lifetime of doing jobs they dislike because they don't understand this, how important this is. So well, it's kind of like you can get caught trapped into your own cycle. Yeah. Like your mum was saying. Doing the same thing every day. Yeah, like your mum said the other day, you know, she was saying that, yeah, I've done it. I went through that exact thing, yeah. the opposite side of it. So, you know, hopefully the more people listen to interviews with people like you, they get inspired and they go, you know what, I've wanted to try this. I know what I want to do, but I've never had the courage or I, but I'm going to try the turtle way and I'm going to start it three hours a week or one day a week. And I'm going to really go for this and I'm going to, yeah. you know, just do it slowly and steadily. And I will get there. I will get there. Two hours a week of my time changed the whole course of what I do for work. Yeah. And it's given yeah. me a hundred percent freedom because of that two hours that I invested and you know, it's really because people say oh, I have kids. I've got this. I got that. It's like no, you spend at least two hours a week watching TV. Yeah. <laughs> so get off the box and go and sit at a desk and jot down some ideas and and try and work towards those ideas. Yeah. And the thing is, you can research everything on Google now. You don't even need to go and yeah. Everything you want to research, you got at your fingertips. There's no excuse. So yeah. Well, thank you, Luke. That was great. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to actually watching this back and yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. And I will put down below everything that Luke and I talked about today, his website, yeah. any information that um, we, you know, have discussed. He will, we will put the links down below for you so you can contact him directly. And are you at the market on Sunday? Uh, this Sunday, no, I'm not. No. Okay, well, I won't see you because I go every week because I'm an addict. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot right. of people do with that one, though. It's quite, I know. It's quite a regular sort of market. Yeah, it's just got a good vibe and it's got a good, you know, it's got, you know, the meat and the veggies and the, you know, extra bits and pieces like what you sell. And there's lots of, you know, there's the mushroom guy. I always go and eat the, the, um, the spring roll mush mushroom. Spring rolls, yeah. <laughs> and there's the dumpling guy that makes the dumplings with the chili sauce yeah. too. So it's like, ah, that's my breakfast. I go to bed and I think, yay, I'm having that for breakfast. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Yeah. you want to say goodbye to everybody? Uh, yeah. Goodbye. Um, thanks for having me on and... Hopefully I'll see you soon, actually. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everyone, I'm signing off and I will see you in the next YouTube. Luke, you stay on and we'll say goodbye in private. Bye, everyone. Bye.